Hey everyone, welcome to Trades Tutor. Today we're going to go through Charles Law. So first thing we want to look at is what we're going to do. Well, we the objective is two things. One is go through an explanation of Charles Law and the second part go through an example using Charles Law. So where do we start? Well, we start with the variables and there are three to choose from pressure, volume, and temperature and they all relate to the gas laws which is what Charles law is now in this case we're only dealing with volume and temperature the pressure remains constant throughout this process so what's the relationship then between the volume and the temperature when dealing with a gas law well think of it this way you have a balloon and fill it with gas that balloon is going to take up a certain volume now cool the gas in that balloon and what's going to happen to the volume? Well, the molecules won't be moving as fast, so theoretically the volume of the balloon should shrink. So as the temperature goes down of the gas, the volume goes down that the gas takes up. And on the reverse, if the temperature of the gas goes up, the particles are moving faster and the volume is going to increase. This is called a direct relationship. All right, so those are the variables. Now, next part is the formula. What you have is V1, which is the initial volume. You have T1, which is the initial temperature. And that's going to equal, on the other side, volume 2 over temperature 2. Okay? So as the volume goes up, the temperature goes up. Or if the volume went down, the temperature went down. All right. Now, the one other thing here we got to deal with is absolutes. Everything has to be an absolute when dealing with gas laws. Now, what we have is volume, and volume is good. It's always an absolute, whatever it is. In our example, we're going to use cubic feet. The temperature, on the other hand, we have to put that into absolute, and here's how we do that. Let's just say you have a starting point, and that's when water freezes. That's going to be 0 Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, depending. Now go up and say, all right, where does water boil? Well, that's 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for absolutes, we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to get to a point, negative 273 degrees Celsius. And what this is called is absolute zero. This is the point where there is no molecular movement. And this is where the absolute scale comes in. And on the, on the Celsius side, we call this Kelvin. So negative two degrees, 273 degrees Celsius is zero degrees Kelvin. On the Fahrenheit scale, negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit is what we call zero degrees Rankin. So if we move up one degree in either one, so say we move up one degree Celsius, we move up one degree Kelvin. The same thing for Fahrenheit. If we move up one degree Fahrenheit, we move up one degree Rankin. So the relationship, or how to turn it into absolute, is this. You take your degrees Celsius, you add 273, and you get your degrees Kelvin. That's what we need to use in the formula. Same thing applies for Fahrenheit. You add 460. All right? So now we have all the information we need here to go through and actually go through a question. And there you go. So a 10 cubic foot container is filled with gas at 200 Fahrenheit. The gas is then cooled. What is a new volume? Now remember, if the temperature goes down, the volume should also go down. So we should be looking for a smaller number than our initial volume. Okay, now here's how we do this. Step one, first of all, put your formula down. There you go, there's Charles Law. Now step two is the most important part. And if you follow this, you can't go wrong. Write down the four variables. What is volume one? 10 cubic feet. What is temperature one? Well, it's 200, but we have to put that into absolute. So we add our 460 to get 660 Rankin. Volume 2, that's what we're trying to find, and temperature 2 is 50 Fahrenheit. 
Once again, add our 460 to put it in absolute, and we get 510. That's the crucial step, because now you have all the variables, and what you got to do in step three is just go plug it in. We do have to rearrange the formula a bit, okay? Because we got to solve for V2, our final volume. Now that's equal to V1 times T2 over T1. Now, just plug in the numbers. V1 is 10, T2 is 510, and T1 is 660. Plug the numbers into your calculator, and you get 7.73 cubic feet is the new volume. And that makes sense. The temperature of the gas went down, the volume went down. All right, there you have it, an example of uh, Charles Law and a little bit of an explanation. Hope this helped, guys. Thanks, for, thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out my other videos. I hope you have a great day and hope your studies are going well. Take care.